All right, so if you can't answer this question without using a calculator, well, that's a pretty good sign that you need to review properties of square roots and radicals. This is a critical topic in mathematics, especially in algebra. But uh, let's take a look at this problem. We have the square root of 4 over 7 times 14 over 3. So what is this equal to? Well, we do have a multiple choice question here. And let's take a look at our answers. So A is 4 over the square root of 3. B is 2 times the square root of 6 over 3. C is 2 times the square root of 6. And D is 4 times the square root of 3. All right, so once again, no calculators. But if you can figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to walk through step by step how to solve this problem. And in doing so, we're going to be uh, reviewing many critical uh, ideas and uh, skills when it comes to working with square roots and radicals. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoyed this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, here is our problem. Uh, so we're not going to use our calculator. So we have the square root of a product. A product is two things being multiplied by uh, uh, you know, each other. And of course, we have a fraction here. So the square root of 4 over 7 uh, times 14 over 3, what is the right answer? Let's go ahead and take a look at that right now. The correct answer is B, 2 times the square root of 6 over 3. Now, if you got that right, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because, indeed, you appear to be a certified professional expert in the area of working with square roots, uh, and that is fantastic. Now, uh, I am calling this a radical as well, so this symbol in math Many of you are going to say, well, that's a square root symbol, uh, Mr. YouTube Math Man. And indeed it is, but it's also a radical. So if you're wondering where in your math textbook uh, you need to go in order to learn more about this, well, look for a chapter or unit, uh, something called like radical expressions um, and equations. All right. Uh, but you start kind of learning this stuff in basic algebra, like pre-algebra, but it is a critical skill. And uh, we're going to be covering a lot of a very uh, important uh, concepts uh, as we get into the solution here. But let's suppose you face uh, this problem. Uh, let's say you're a math student and you face this problem on a test. and You're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I don't know what to do. Uh, what should I do? Well, listen, you have a multiple choice question here. Uh, because we're dealing with a multiple choice question, always, always take a guess. So if this looks pretty good to you, well, take a guess. Unfortunately, this is wrong, but never leave a math question blank, all right? So this is coming from a math teacher. It really does drive uh, math uh, 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 teachers crazy. So let's suppose you have a question, there's a 100 uh, math test or math exam, and there's a 100 questions on your exam. And you're like, I got to get this right. I got to get this right. You got to, you know, be careful of your time management. And, you know, even though you get all these right, if you left 60 questions blank, who cares? You're still going to fail the test. You got to, you know, spread out your time. And uh, anyways, you know, I can't help myself as a math teacher to really say, hey, don't leave any questions uh, blank. Unless, of course, you're going to get penalized for the wrong answer. And that could be the case in tests like the SAT or ACT. But in general, always, always, always take a good guess. All right. But, uh, you know, what's better than taking a guess? Well, uh, what's better is to actually know the math. So let's go and get into the actual math uh, right now. And in doing so, I'm going to cover a lot of really important concepts when we are talking about square roots and radicals. We'll just kind of keep it to square roots for now. But here is our problem. So the first thing that we need to re review, make sure you know how to do, is multiply fractions. So how do we multiply fractions? Well, we simply multiply the respective numerators and denominators. And hopefully you, you uh, are up to speed on your fractions. And you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, 7 goes into 14, 2. So 4 times 2 is 8. So uh, we, what we have here, 4 over 7 times 14 over 3 is really 8 thirds. Right? We don't have to multiply 4 times 14 over 7 times 3. That would be a lot of work. 
So this equivalent problem is the same thing as the square root of eight uh, thirds, okay? But I'm going to kind of do this uh, problem in a bit um, longer fashion, just so we can review more properties of square roots. So let's go ahead and get into this right now. All right, so one of the properties that we can use is we can break up a square root of a product into the square root of the individual product. So let me go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here. So if I have the square root of 10, I can think of uh, the square root of 10 as the square root of two times five, right? So that is a product. And then I could split this square, one big square root over this product into two individual square roots. Okay, in other words, the square root over this factor, the square root of two times the square root of five. So if I have this situation, I can write it this way and I can write it like this, or I can go this way, here, here, here. So these properties, you know, you kind of um, go from, from one form to another. So here I have the square root of uh, two things being multiplied by one another. Okay, now of course we know that this is the same thing as the square root of eight thirds, but uh, just to kind of do a quick review, let's go ahead and see what happens if we take this one big square root over these products and just break them up. So we could do it this way, and sometimes uh, this is beneficial, right? Now in doing so, I can write the square root of four times uh, 4 over 7 times 14 over 3, right? So the square root of 4 over 7 times 14 over 3. I can write it this way, the square root of 4 over 7 times the square root of 14 over 3. Or I could proceed and do what I just did, right? And just multiply uh, the fractions, right? So the square root of 4 times uh, 14, right? When you multiply fractions, you multiply the respective numerators and denominators. So uh, if you're thinking, what should I do, Mr. YouTube Math Man? Well, here, 7 again goes into 14, 2. So we're going to end up with the square root of 8 thirds. Now, when we do, uh, when we break up this uh, uh, product here, okay, this, uh, this big square root, this times this, do we really kind of get anywhere when we break it up into two individual square roots? Well, no. The matter of fact, this is kind of uh, going to com uh, complicate our uh, solution here. So when we're given the choice, it's better to go with this option, right? So we want to think of this as the square root of 8 uh, over 3, okay? But this is correct, but we're going to have to do more work in this, um, you know, form but this is a property that you could use, and sometimes doing this uh, can make your solution much easier. All right, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look at the problem this way. So we have the square root of 4 uh, times 14 over 7 times 3. Remember, this is how we multiply fractions, but we could take that 7 and multiply, or uh, that 7 goes into 14, 2. So we have 4 times 2 over 3. Okay, so 14 is the same thing as 7 times 2, and we're cross-canceling like factors. You know, we're talking about basic fraction stuff here. All right, so the problem that we're going to be focusing in here on is the square root of 4 times 2 over 3, or the square root of 8 over 3. Now, if you got this far, that's pretty good. So in other words, if, in other words, if you were saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, I knew this was the right answer, you know, uh, but I didn't see that as an option. Well, this is not the full, complete answer. Okay, this is like pretty good, but we're not done. Matter of fact, this particular problem or this uh, situation right here, we uh, needs a lot of work. Okay, and hopefully you knew what to do here. But if you got to this point, that's pretty good. But we need to uh, finish out the rest of the problem. So let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely don't mind asking for help. I hope you don't mind asking for help, you know, and hopefully you watching this video is an indication of like, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I need help in math. That is fantastic, right? We all need help, okay, for whatever we're doing. For me, I'm trying to grow my YouTube channel as large as possible because I have a goal is trying to help as many people as possible, but I can't do that without having actual people like yourself saying, all right, I'll help you out uh, by in the best way to support uh, this channel. And I'm kind of stumbling on my <laughs> thoughts and words here, but uh, is to simply subscribe. That's all I'm asking you uh, to do is say, all right, I'll subscribe. It does go a long way on YouTube. And although I've reached uh, over 600,000 subscribers, I'm super happy about that. Every subscriber that uh, is a subscriber to my channel, every person that watches my video, I feel like I have a responsibility to really try to deliver really good math content. Okay, I feel, you know, just a, 
uh, innate responsibility as a math teacher. I want to make sure that I cover, you know, the topic well, and whoever you know watches my video, whether they become a subscriber or not, you know, that they learned something, or maybe they already knew something and. I kind of reinforced something in them. So I really take what I do seriously. But again, I need your help. And uh, so just hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you can get my latest videos. By the way, if you want to um, really, really learn from me, check out my full main math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. And what we're talking about here, uh, the level of math you might be interested in, like my Algebra 1 or Algebra 2 course. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and get into the rest of this problem. All right, so here we have the square root of a fraction. Now, we didn't talk about this last time. We had the square root of two fractions, a times b, and we broke them up this way in the two products. But one awesome property that we have with square roots is that when we have the square root of, fra of a fraction, we can actually write um, the one big square root as the square root of the numerator over the square root of the denominator. And that's what we're going to have to do here. And again, this is a property of square roots that you need to understand. Now, when you use these various properties, it really all depends upon the situation and the strategy that you're thinking about using. Sometimes you'll have a problem in this form, and it's better to write it like this. Let me see if I can think of an example. Maybe um, here, I think this is a pretty good example. Let's say I had the square root of 20 over the square root of 5. Let's say that was our problem. Okay, well, this I can write as one big square root as 20 over 5, and 20 divided by 5 is what? Well, that is the square root of 4. So the answer to this problem is the square root of 4 or 2. Okay, so sometimes we want to go from two individual square roots over the numerator and the, and the denominator into one big square root. But uh, sometimes you want to go the opposite direction, and then this is one of these situations where we want to break this up as the square root of 8 over the square root of 3. All right, this is actually not even a choice here. In other words, um, we don't have a much of an option because we have to deal with this situation right here. We have a square root of an irrational number in the denominator. We're not allowed to have this in mathematics, and we're going to address this here in a second. But let's go ahead and uh, take a look at what we have so far. So we have the square root of 8 over the square root of 3. And now let's use this other property that we kind of covered uh, previously that we can write the square root of 8 as the square root of 4 times 2. Okay, so remember, I could turn this 8 into, uh, I can think of it as a product of two numbers. And what we're looking for is perfect square factors, numbers like 4, 9, 16, 25, because the square root of these numbers are lovely numbers themselves, right? So the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 9 is 3, the square root of 16 is 4. I am covering a lot of material here, so if you're like, you know, <laughs> overwhelmed, well, again, just use this as, uh, as feedback to review, you know, uh, properties of square roots, right? This is a, a very, very important in mathematics. But the square root of 8 is the same thing as the square root of 4 times 2. But I can write this square root of 4 times 2 as two individual square roots. So that is the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. And now I know that the square root of 4 is 2. So the square root of 8 is the same thing as 2 times the square root of 3. And we still have this square root of 3 down in the denominator. But this is pretty good right here. But this is not done. All right? You might be saying, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is a lot of work here. I don't really like this problem. Well, this is just a typical type of situation that you're going to have to uh, deal with. So let's go ahead and continue forward. We are making progress, but we have a problem. You can never leave the square root of an irrational number in the denominator. Okay, so when you have a math problem, all right, if I have the square root of 7 over the square root of 4, this is not a problem because I can find the square root of 4. That's 2 because the square root of 4 is not an irrational number. Okay, an irrational number is a number. Okay, if you take the square root of 3 and you turn it into a decimal on your calculator, what you're going to get is a decimal that goes on and on and on. It's non repeating and non terminating. You can never have that situation in the denominator. Okay, they just need to know that this is not a um, format that you're allowed to keep. And if you do this, you're like, well, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm just going to leave my problem like that and turn it into my teacher. Well, I can guarantee you that you're going to get problems wrong, um, you know, you're going to get points off. And uh, not only that, if you're taking some sort of multiple 
uh, choice exam, you're not going to recognize the right answer, okay, because we need to fix this up. And what we need to do here is something called rationalize the denominator. We need to get this uh, square root of uh, 3 out of the denominator without changing the value of the fraction. All right, so how do we do that? Well, what we're going to do is multiply this entire fraction by 1 because anything uh, multiplied by 1, like 2, thir two thirds times 1, is simply 2 thirds, right? So I'm not going to break uh, the number or change the value if I multiply it by 1, but we're going to use a very cool and interesting 1, and that 1 is going to be this fraction or this uh, square root down here. So the square root of 3. So we're going to take that and we're going to multiply this number times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. Now, I want you to understand that we're not changing the value here because the square root of 3 divided by the square root of 3 is what? Anything divided by itself is 1. Okay, so we're really technically just taking this and multiplying it by 1. So we're not breaking the problem. But what we're doing is what we uh, is called rationalizing the denominator. This is a little trick. Again, we're going to take whatever the square root is down here, and we're going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3 in this instance. Okay, But this trick um, allows us to get rid of this square root in the denominator. All right, so let's go ahead and do this right now. So 2 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. So how do we multiply square roots here? Well, we're going to just take this 2. This is one big multiplication situation. So it's going to be 2 times the square root of 2. And we'll take uh, these two uh, factors here. Okay, and we're going to put this under one big square root. Okay, so this is going to be 2 times the square root of 2 times 3. Remember, we can write it this way or we can go this way. So these properties work in both directions. So 2 times, I'm going to show you this right here. Again, we are reviewing a lot of different properties here. So 2 times the square root of 2, two times the square root of 3 is the same thing as 2 times the square root of 2 times 3. All right, that's going to be over the square root of 3 times the square root of 3, which is the same thing as the square root of 3 times 3. Now, this is where uh, this uh, little uh, you know method is going to really help us out because what is the square root of 3 times the square root of 3? Well, the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is the square root of 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. And up here... When we clean up the numerator, 2 times the square root of 2 times 3, of course, that's going to be 2 times the square root of 6. But the main uh, thing here is that we got rid of the square root in the denominator. We got rid of that irrational number. So the square root of 3 times 3 is the square root of, the square root of 9, which, of course, is 3. So this is our final, final answer. All right, so hopefully you were able to do this problem. And if you weren't, don't feel bad. Hopefully uh, it was only one of these properties or something here that kind of confused you or you needed review on, you should never feel bad about, you know, getting any math problem wrong. You know, learning math is a process of trying and, you know, getting something wrong. The only way you're going to improve is to try. Okay, it's like learning a foreign language. If you want to speak another language, you're not going to speak perfectly. You're going to, you know, you know, speak in a real, uh, you know, a poor way, if you will. And someone is going to be like, oh, yeah, you don't understand the language. Well, in math, you're trying to learn the language of math, so you just have to try to speak it. Now, when you speak the language of math, really what you're doing is writing the language of math. That's why it's important to be clear, uh, you know, be neat, organized, use pencil, and write out each step because what you want to do is try to identify the one or two things that you didn't understand in the problem, okay, where if you could correct your misunderstanding of these things, well, then you uh, understand the entire problem, okay? The only way you're going to be able to identify what you don't know is by really being detailed and structured. So that is, you know, for um, lack of a better word, you know, the only way to study mathematics. You can't be, um, you know, sloppy or not be willing to kind of, you know, put in the work. But uh, anyways, hopefully this little video helped you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.